Lineco recently sent me a nice package to my P.O. box. Thank you, by the way. It was full of bookbinding supplies, which I will definitely put to good use, including a couple of bookbinding kits. I thought it would be fun to test one of these out, so I put a poll up and asked you guys which one I should do, and the majority of you picked the Dosido Coptic Journal Kit. So let's test it out. Before we start, do me a favor and hit that like button on this video so the algorithm has more of a chance of sharing my channel. And if you want to help me rely less on the YouTube algorithm, consider becoming a patron or a member. You will get perks along with supporting my efforts to make more nerdy bookbinding content. This kit does include most of the materials I'll need, but I will need to have some extra tools and glue on hand. I'll put links to everything I use in the description along with links to other kits because I'm not sure if this exact one is still available. Here we have some nice decorative paper in two different sizes and there's six sheets of it total. One size is for the outside of the cover and then the smaller size is for the inside. Three squares of bookboard waxed linen thread, and a binding needle, and 80 sheets of this cream colored paper. Unfortunately, some of the edges got bent against the board inside the kit, probably during the shipping process. The back has some info on Johann Gutenberg and some of their other kits, and you can pause it here if you want to read the whole thing. I noticed the instructions had hole templates for punching, like a to put this in a three ring binder. I thought that was thoughtful for those who want to save the instructions for later if you want to do this again. It says to read and study the glue tips carefully before starting anything, so that's what I did. And although I know most of this stuff already, I think this is really helpful for beginners. Following along, it also said to label all of my materials. A is the board. B is the outside decorative paper, and C is the inside decorative paper. I'm sure they did this so all of the instructions would make more sense and there would be less confusion. They did also send me a bookbinding toolkit which includes a glue brush, and I'm curious to use this because I've never used an official bookbinding glue brush before. It's round and it's a little different than my usual flat brush that I like to use. Also, there's a heavy duty awl and a light duty awl in here, a bone folder. Might as well test them out while I'm testing out their kit. In case I didn't mention this already, this is not a sponsored video. They sent this stuff to my P.O. box, it was gifted, and I just want to try it out for fun. On to gluing the covers, I have my PVA glue ready. In the instructions, it says to first glue the paper and then put the board on the paper. I usually put the glue on the board first because I think it, it has less chance of warping, but let's just go with their instructions and see how it goes. They also said to work from the inside out, so brushing the glue from the middle to the edges. And it also said to put wax paper on top to smooth it over, which I'm not used to doing either, but maybe they said to do this so it doesn't ruin the decorative paper. Referring back to their guide, I'm cutting the corners, leaving extra paper on the tips so there's enough to fold over. Now to glue the edges, it says to tightly pull to glue them, which is, I'm not used to like pulling the paper. I kind of tried it, but then it just felt weird, so I just glued over the flaps like I usually do. And it says to add extra glue to the corners, so I did that. And it said to work parallel to the flaps, so left and right, and then top and bottom. Then to glue the inside paper, it also said to add the glue to the paper, and then put it on the board, which is the opposite that I usually do. I usually put the glue on the board, and then put glue on the border of the paper, again to minimize warping, but I will just do it how the instructions say and see how it goes. I found this way to be a bit more messy, but it didn't end up warping the paper at all, so I think either way could work fine. It's whatever your preference is. I did this to all three pieces, and there were no instructions on drying, so I didn't know if I should press these or put weights on top of them, but the board is so thick that I think they would be fine, and I let them dry just like this. 
Also thought it was helpful that they noted to keep your tools clean while you work and keep extra cloths and scrap paper on hand. Now to get into the book block, I'm going to make signatures with the paper they provided. The instructions say to fold each sheet in half and then stack them together, which is what I used to do, but now I find it much faster to just fold the whole group in half. This made 10 signatures, and then it says to mark the top of each signature with an arrow, lightly with a pencil. Now for the template for making the holes, you can use one page from the signature, but since I have this little paper thing I made on hand from my previous video, I'm just going to use that. It also helps keep the signatures stacked together. If you want to explore the many different ways to make binding holes, I have a video for you right here. I talk about this template and also test some punching cradles and try to figure out what the fastest method is for making holes and signatures. I marked out the measurements in the instructions and then pierced through each signature. Now for the covers, they suggested to mark each one with a sticky note and pointing to the top of the cover. Then I used a signature as a template to mark the holes. Using the heavy duty all this time that came in that kit, I'm piercing through the covers and here I realized this board is really thick. Which is not a bad thing, this board is definitely good quality book board. But it took a little bit of extra strength to get through. Also, I think the measurement was a little bit too close to the edge, so it kind of poked up the end paper on the inside. For the center cover, the binding holes will go on the left and right side to make this a do -si do book. Now for the Coptic stitch binding, I'm trying out the thread and needle that came with the kit, using their tip to press the end so it's easier to thread the needle. And if I cut all the thread in half, it should be enough for both sides of the book. Following through the steps, I think they did a really good job at providing a clear picture on how to do this binding method. It is a little bit different than the way I'm used to doing a Coptic stitch. If you want to see my version, I do have a tutorial. It is a little old, but it still holds up and people still watch it to learn how to do this stitch. This might be considered untraditional compared to theirs, but it's what I've grown to like and it's become my preference. So like I've said before, there are many ways to bind a book and there are so many different variations. I found this kit's instructions to be just as easy to do as the Coptic stitch I'm used to, even if it's a more traditional version. Because the diagrams are laid out so clearly, I do think this could be a beginner-friendly binding. Unfortunately, I pulled the thread too tight and ripped one of the signatures. And when I finished the cover, the next step was to weave the leftover thread down the, the kettle stitch area of the binding, which I'm totally not used to doing. I've never done it this way, but it works. And pulling it back into the very first signature I started from to tie off the ends in a knot. It didn't actually say to tie it off in a knot or to trim off the thread, but that's what I would do. Now I need to bind on the remaining signatures in the same method as I just did to complete the other side of the book. I have heard of a do, -si -do book before, but I don't know why I've never tried to make one until now. And this is actually a pretty fun layout of a book. You get two sides, it's fun to open, I think it looks cool, and it's like having two sketchbooks in one. This was also my first time trying a bookbinding kit, and I would have loved to have this when I started out bookbinding. There are a lot of instructions, but I think that's really helpful, especially if you're just starting out. Despite some of the paper being bent, I think all of the materials were really good quality. I like that I didn't have to measure, trim, or cut anything, it was all to size. And even though there are some things I would do differently, I did appreciate all the tips in the instructions, even the labeling, it might have seemed an extra step, but if you are new to bookbinding, that would be helpful to guide you through. If there are any other kits you know of that you'd like to see me try out on this channel, leave it in a comment below, and I'd like to say a big thank you to my studio support patrons and members. If you want to join and get perks for supporting my channel, those links will be down below. Subscribe to my channel for more videos, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!